welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. And you know on this channel, if you've watched videos, this is all about giving you world-class technical skills to go and attack your technical problems, attack your frustrations, put them to bed and put them to bed for good. And as a step forward on that journey, I'm pleased to announce the latest reference book in our series. This is the Six Sigma Yellow Belt Handbook. If you're just starting out and you're just getting involved in solving your technical problems and removing your frustrations, this book is full of practical advice on how to use simple quality tools, how to run measurement system analysis, gauge R&R, &R, in a practical way so that you understand what the results are telling you, you understand your process physics and you understand how to put your problems to bed for good. If you're starting out on the journey of Six Sigma, this is 180 pages of fantastic practical advice that you're going to find absolutely um, absolutely indispensable in your work. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this text is in the description below. Go and click on the link and buy your copy of the Six Sigma Yellow Belt Handbook now. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter well, we're going to talk about what type of action can you take in your problem solving project to get the process in the place that you want it to be. So there's several types of action. So here we go. So what problem solving action should you take? Okay, now I tend to get a lot of people who want to completely transform the process rather than fix what's in front of them. So let's have a look. The type of action you could take. You could fix the process in front of you. In other words, make sure that you get the best out of it. So you want to get the best out of whatever you've got right now. That, that's what fix the process would mean. You could, and people want to do this all the time, by the way, buy a new machine. It's quite a common reaction. My machine's rubbish. I'm just going to buy a new one. That's the problem. The other kind of, you know, we want to throw the whole process in the bin this would be another place where you would be starting again is if you decide I'm gonna change the material because effectively that's gonna be a whole brand new process a set of knowledge that you simply don't have okay so which one should you do because to be fair there will be times when this is the right thing to do. There'll be times when maybe this is the right thing to do. Um, so how do you know which one of these actions you should take? Well, here's the key. Remember what you're doing. You're trying to understand and transform your process physics. So when you do your problem definition, you need to define the state of your physics all right so people think that when i do problem definition i'm gonna say oh look the printing's not right it's only on the green pen the, the problem definition is somehow some specific um some specific set of words that says where the problem is what it is for me when i'm defining the problem I'm defining the physics of the problem. And here's the physics. Is this your state of plot a graph? It's very simple. Plot a graph. Is that what you've got? 
All right, so if you've got that, let's say you've got some tolerances, the process is just swinging around wildly, just won't, won't land inside the tolerance that you want it to land in. Now that is chaos, that's chaotic. That's this. What you have is a piece of equipment which you don't respect. You don't have any rules. You don't have any repetitive settings. Everything's just being allowed to just swing around. And if you allow inputs to swing around, the outputs just swing around in complete chaos. So if you're gonna have problem definition, plot the graph. What, what does the physics look like? If the physics looks like this, if you buy a new machine, you'll just abuse that as well. You won't have any standards for it. Um, maybe its condition will be better. So maybe it will come in a little bit. But if you've got now defined maintenance methods, what will happen? You'll just abuse the machine. The machine will eventually go back to, to where it was before and you'll have spent a million quid buying a new piece of equipment. So why don't you make this right first? And if you still can't get inside those red lines, then you can think maybe a new machine might be needed. Okay. So what else could you have? Well, you could have this. You have a process that's like that, nice and controlled. But it's not inside the tolerances. Okay, it's not inside the tolerances. Now, this or this could be the answer, could be the answer. If what you've done now, before you go and do that, is a design experiment. Okay, remember what this is. This is a process which is in control. You have it in control. In other words, what control means is you're holding it in a particular place. That's all control means. It doesn't mean you're holding it inside the tolerances, by the way. Your process is in control. You are holding it in a particular place. What you can't do is drive it into the tolerance. Okay. Now, before you go buy a new machine, change the material, think how complicated your process is. So designed experiment. Let's say you've got some settings on the machine. We'll just, we'll just think of some time, temperature, pressure, speed, angle. All right, so we we'll just think of a few simple variables. Now then, time. Let's say time can go between 40, 20 seconds and 40 seconds. Temperature goes between 80 degrees, 120 degrees. Pressure goes from uh, four bar to six bar. Uh, speed goes from 100 to 200. Angle goes from 40 degrees to 50 degrees. Okay, so just five, you just got five dials on the machine. What you're trying to do is learn whether you are capable of dropping it inside those tolerances right there. Now then, think how complicated this is. Multiply these up. Look, what have you got? 20 times 40 times 2 times 100 times 10. Let's see if I can do that very quickly. Um, 800, 1600, uh, 1600 uh, times 100 times 100 times 10. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, by the way, your machine will be more complicated than this. It won't be 1.6 million. So just those five dials there have 1.6 million choices. You need to interrogate that to learn if the machine can put it there. You do a designed experiment to do that. Then you go, we've controlled the process. We've interrogated the process. We know it can't do it. In which case, 
you need to not necessarily buy a new machine you need to find a different machine to do this whether it's already on your site or whether you have to go buy a new one is a different matter but now you've understood the physics you've got the process under control you've understood the physics of the design space for the product that you're making now you know the design space is incapable now go buy the machine or of course change the material because that that has a sim that could have a similar effect you know changing the material could drive this thing on target however of course the minute you buy a new machine or you buy a new material guess what you introduce you introduce this again so now you have a design space that you don't understand so you have to do the doe you've either got to do the doe when the new machine comes in well you might as well start with the doe on the old machine let's find out what the capability of the design space is first then we'll talk about new materials etc by the way material is rarely causing this this is rarely going to be a material solution why isn't it going to be a material solution because in order for chaos to exist your material would have to be coming into your factory chaotically and what do you do in order to make sure that doesn't happen you put tolerances on your raw material at least I hope you put tolerances on your raw material and therefore the material is coming in in a controlled state this cannot cause this it's just it's physics if control goes in variability cannot come out it's physics that's why I say the problem definition is about physics when you've got this this is lack of control on your process when you've got this this is controlled but maybe you don't have the design space to hit the target so this is always going to be you know this solution this solution this is going to be this is going to be the last thing you do when you've got that let's find out what the process does first let's get the process under control because if I introduce new material into this environment it'll still do this if I introduce a new machine into this environment it'll still do this because it's a chaotic environment you've got no control so that can never be the solution the only time that can be the solution is when what you're trying to do is take a controlled process but you just don't have the you don't have the capability of the machine the machine isn't capable of pushing the result to target then you need a new machine or you need new material but by the way even with new material the one thing I would ask with new material is you know what feature What feature do you think is going to do that if you know go change the material so if it's hardness go buy new material if it's surface finish go buy different material if it's density go buy different material but if you don't know that and you just go I think new material will fix it well you might be right but you might be wrong and you're gonna pull this complexity on top of you anyway so and you might still find that the new material only goes there and I still can't get there so you know there's a whole load of great work you can do use your equipment and your systems to the best of their capability then think about saying I need to buy better capability I need to change the capability if this is your problem these aren't your solutions this is the solution up here define your physics change the physics it really is as straightforward as that problem definition is about what physics do I need to change and then I'll know what action to take to fix the problem <laughs>